Hey, good afternoon. Today's Bible study comes from Exodus, the 35th chapter, the 20th through the 29th verse, and also 2 Corinthians, the 9th chapter, 6 through the 8th verse. And it reads as follows. Then the whole Israelite community withdrew from Moses' presence, and everyone who was willing and whose heart moved them came and brought an offering to the Lord for the work of the tent of meeting, for all its service, and for the sacred garments. All who were willing, men and women alike, came and brought gold, jewelry of all kinds, brooches, earrings, rings, and ornaments. They all presented their gold as a wave offering to the Lord. Everyone who had blue, purple, or scarlet yarn, or fine linen, or goat hair, ram skins dyed red, or the other durable leather brought them. Those presenting an offering of silver or bronze brought it as an offering to the Lord, and everyone who had a case of wood from any part of the work brought it. Every skilled woman spun with their hands and brought what she had spun, blue, purple, or scarlet yarn, or fine linen, and all the women who were willing and had the skill spun the goat hair. The leaders brought onyx stones and other gems to be mounted on the ephod and breastpiece. They also brought spices and olive oil for the light and for the anointing oil and for the fragrant incense. All the Israelite men and women who were willing brought to the Lord free will offerings for all the work the Lord through Moses had commanded them to do. 2 Corinthians 9 chapter 6 through 8 verses. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all the things and all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Amen. Amen. And I think that was actually up to verse 8 for Corinthians, if I didn't say that. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 8 was that last part. So when we are looking at Exodus 35th chapter, the 20th verse, and actually I put the 21st verse together with this, um, you can see that the whole Israelite community had withdrawn from Moses' presence, and everyone who was willing and whose heart moved them came and brought an offering to the Lord for the work of the on the tent of meeting, for its service and for the sacred garments. If you look at Exodus 35, um, 4 through 19, read that, and you'll see what was going. Excuse me, what was going on? The tabernacle was to be dedicated to the honor of God and used in His service, and therefore what was brought for it was an offering to the Lord. The rule is, whosoever is of a willing heart, willing heart, let him bring all that were skillful must work. They heard the Lord's word, and now they had to be doers of the word, and they had to do it willingly. The willingness had to come from their spirits, and not by the thoughts of gain. And, verse, and as verse 21 says, the willing and heart moved. So you have to move, and the heart has to be willing. The tent meeting is another name used for the Jewish tabernacle that was built as a place of worship for the people of Israel during their 40 years in the wilderness journey um, after they left e Egypt. And tabernacle means tent. Also, in this text, it speaks to the willing giver. What does the Bible say about a willing giver or just giving? If you look at Deuteronomy 16, 17, it says, Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of the Lord, thy God, which he hath given thee. So you should give, you should give just from what the Lord has given to you. And also the God, the Lord loves a willing and cheerful giver. 
All who were willing, men and women alike, came and brought gold, jewelry of kinds, brooches, earrings, rings, and ornaments. They all presented their gold as a wave offering to the Lord. Once, if, once again, it refers to the willing giver. It says all who were willing, men and women alike. It doesn't say all that have much or little. It just says your willingness to give to God. God has given you everything in heaven and in earth. Come give to him. Second Peter 1, 3, 4, godly life, it says, His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. He has given you everything for a godly life. John 14, 2 and 3 speaks of what he's done for you for an eternal life. My father's house has many mansions. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may, may be where I am. Wow, even for eternal life, the Lord has given you rooms and a mansion. He's given us everything, physical and spiritual. So give back to him as a willing participant. Everyone who had blue, purple, or scarlet yarn, or fine linen, or goat hair, ram skins, dyed red, or the other durable leather, brought them. If you notice in the previous verses they speak of a willing giver, you have to give to the Lord willingly. And if you look at what they brought, remember this, that purple was a very expensive royalty type color uh, used back at that time. If you go to 2 Corinthians 8.12, for if the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. A person who freely gives will enjoy God's blessings. It doesn't necessarily mean that if you freely give you will be rich with money and material it does mean you will live a life that pleases God he rewards us with spiritual blessings like peace and joy on this earth and eternal blessings or rewards in heaven if you look at Matthew 16 I'm sorry Matthew 6 19 through 20 it says do not store for yourselves treasure on earth where the moths and the vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal but store for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moss and venom do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in to steal. In Colossians 3, 23 through 24, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. Hmm. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. Our motive to give needs to be out of our thankfulness for all that God has given to us and not so that we can get a prize or a reward. Why do we give? Because God has given us everything. Those presenting an offering of silver bronze brought in, or bronze brought in, it brought it as an, let me do that again. Those presenting an offering of silver or bronze brought it as an offering to the Lord and everyone who had acacia wood for any part of the work brought it. Every skilled woman spun with her hands and brought what she had spun, blue, purple, and scarlet yarn or fine linen. And the women who were willing and had the skill spun the goat hair. Once again, that willing falls into play. The leaders brought onyx stones and other gems to be mounted on the effort and breast piece. They also brought spices and olive oil for the light and for the anointing oil for the fragrant incense. This is given this giving was an offering that came from every level. There were specifics for this offering and in verses 27 through 28 the leaders brought stones, gems, spices, olive oil and incense. This also showed that the status/position that is in the physical realm has no meaning to God. We are all servants unto God and that goes right in the Romans and Galatians. Romans 2.11 says, For God does not show favoritism. Galatians 3.28, There is neither Jew nor Gentile, there is neither slave or free, nor male or female, because you are all one in Christ Jesus. A servant of the Lord is a servant of the Lord. 
and we should all give willingly to God in any manner that we give to him. This ranges from talent to time. We are all one body and we have to make sure that we give our all to that body to help it grow. And the range is from, like I said, from your talent that you have to the time that you have for the Lord. Verse 29 says, All Israelite men and women who were willing brought the Lord freewill offerings for all the work the Lord through Moses has commanded them to do. Philippians 4.19 says, And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. The question is, can you ever beat God giving? If you wonder, and the answer is no. And for the Almighty Father that gives to you abundantly through his grace and mercy, who has created everything and gives to you even in our unfaithfulness, why wouldn't you give to God willingly? Just like I stated previously, why would God not be a jealous God when he is the only God and he created everything and given it to us with even more rewards in heaven? The sacrifice, the salvation, the mercy, the love, the long-suffering, the patience, add, your add on because God has given to us willingly. The awesome thing about this is that it was a free will offering and a praise for what God had done for them using Moses. The Lord provided all of their needs and he said that he would reward them. Excuse me for yelling at Exodus 25 8. Then have them make a sanctuary for me, and I will dwell among them. 2 Corinthians 9 6 through 8. Remember this whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. In short, if you want big rewards, then put out a big effort. If you are taking, talking about money, then put it out an offering that is worthy of what you have, and do so willingly. John 21, 1 through 4 says, As Jesus looked up, he saw the rich putting their gifts into the temple treasury. He also saw a poor widow put in two very small copper coins. Truly I tell you, he said, this poor widow has put in more than all the others. All these people gave their gifts out of their wealth. But she, out of her poverty, put in all she had to live on. Wow. She put in all she had to live on. It is your time then to give to the Lord and give the Lord the time that is just his. James 2, 14 through 17. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you say to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but there's nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by an action, is dead. Your faith and deeds are the time that you give to the Lord, and you have to put in some time. As the Israelites did, they gave material and time, but more importantly, they were obedient to the Word of God, which is its own reward. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Be happy that you even have the ability to give to the Almighty Father and count it as His love shining on you and you reflecting black back to Him to where the shine actually came from. Verse 8 says, And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. And you can read Psalms 112, 1 through 6, and you'll see that. In closing, remember that we are now in the grace period. And although we are used to giving a tenth, we should be concentrating on giving willingly and faithfully. And we will definitely be giving God our best. Amen. Amen.